Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing yet another discovery, or I guess a rediscovery or reanalysis, of a pretty exciting star system that seems to contain first confirmed water planets, or ocean worlds as they're also known, we've ever discovered. But more specifically, identifying types of planets we don't have here in the solar system, but types of planets the scientists believe potentially exist everywhere out there, maybe even representing some of the most common planets in existence in our galaxy. And so in this video we're going to discuss this particular star system known as Kepler-138 in a little bit more detail, discuss what the scientists have recently identified and discovered about the star system, and of course discuss what this means for astronomy as well. And so first let's start with the discovery and the star system itself. Like most of the stars in our galaxy, this is what's known as a red dwarf, also known as an M-type star. It's known as Kepler-138, sometimes also referred to as Koi-314. Discovered by the iconic Kepler telescope back in 2014. And like so many other discoveries from the Kepler telescope, in this case, by seeing the shadows pass in front of the star, the scientists discovered that there were at least two separate planets, eventually discovering a third planet, and then potentially even the fourth. As you probably know, Kepler telescope discovered over 5,000 different planets, and although we've expected at least some of them to be similar to what we have in the solar system, the vast vast majority of them seems to be extremely different, either super-Earths, mini-Neptunes, hot Jupiters, or, like what we have here, ocean worlds. Although in this case, an extreme ocean world, something that we can't actually even imagine. And the star that's about 218 light years away from us, is positioned in such a way that it's relatively easy to see the planets, actually it looks something like this, and in this case it's relatively easy to get pretty much all of the necessary data to determine their mass and of course their density. Now the closest planet to the star, as of today, is one of the smallest in terms of mass ever discovered, the smallest by looking at the actual transit. It's known as Kepler-138b and it's very likely extremely similar to Mars in terms of mass and size. But it's also much closer to the parent star and thus potentially has extremely hot temperatures. Although the actual properties of this planet are still not entirely clear. Now because this particular star is much smaller than our sun, it's about half the size and half the mass of the sun, it also has less temperature. And so here the planets can be much much closer to the star and still be not as hot as some of the planets in the solar system. So in this case we're not entirely certain how hot this planet is. But assuming that it has at least a little bit of atmosphere, it potentially has conditions similar to Venus. Either way, this particular planet is not particularly exciting. But the next two are very different and are very exciting. And these two planets actually turn out to be almost like twins. Both Kepler-138c and Kepler-138d are roughly around 50% larger than planet Earth. And they both seem to possess relatively similar mass. But judging by their density, the scientists determined that they're very likely made out of some kind of a volatile substance. In this case, the most likely substance to create these planets is water. Both of these planets very likely have some kind of a metallic or rocky core, but also an extremely thick layer of really really hot pressurized water. With a huge thick layer of some kind of a steam water, or basically very hot water gas, covering the surface or essentially the upper atmosphere, but then as you go deeper and deeper, the water becomes super critical and becomes liquid, pressurized, super super hot, and a lot sloshier than the water we have here on Earth, but liquid water nevertheless. And the reason these two planets are very likely superheated water is really because of their distance to the star. A single orbit here takes about 13 days for the closest planet and 23 days for the farther planet. And so one is obviously a little bit hotter than the other, but they do seem to contain very similar properties. Their mass is just a little bit different and their size is exactly the same. Both are twice as massive as planet Earth and both are essentially approximately 50% the size of planet Earth. And though it is possible that maybe these planets are not made out of water but some other unusual volatile, because of the ubiquity of water out there, it just makes the most sense. So it's most likely unusual water gas. Although the previous assumption was that these were very thick super-Earths, but it doesn't seem to be the case based on the density measurements from the recent paper. The recent paper even suggests that the ocean here is probably around 2000 kilometers in depth, representing roughly around 50% of the volume of the entire planet, although only about 11% of total mass. 
which in terms of composition is actually kind of similar to many moons we have here in the solar system, such as Europa, Ganymede, Titan, Enceladus, and so on. They do actually have very similar density and very similar water volume on the inside, but in this case these are frozen moons. Whereas in this case, this is what happens if you were to bring these objects much closer to the star itself. The outer layer evaporates and creates a relatively thick layer of gas that potentially creates a lot of unusual properties on the surface. But at the moment it would be really difficult to imagine what these planets actually look like. I mean, for all we know, they are basically just these large gas balls with a lot of water clouds all over the surface. But more importantly, a lot of recent observations, including some of the recent studies, actually establish that these planets are most likely the most common planets in the entire galaxy. Our whole galaxy might actually contain quite a lot of these ocean worlds and not so much anything else, with the video in the description below explaining a little bit more detail about all of this. But until future observations with James Webb Telescope, we're not going to know for sure what these planets contain. It does of course make it a perfect target for the future observations though, and so we're going to be learning more about these in the next few years. But there is something else really intriguing about this star system a little bit farther away. Not so long ago the scientists realized that the star was also wobbling just a little bit. It was basically doing this, as if there was another object, and the new analysis suggests that there does seem to be another planet farther away. And in this case the mass of this planet is a little bit less than Venus, but a little bit more than Mars. But more intriguingly, it seems to be located on the outskirts of what's known as the habitable zone. In other words, it's like someone took Venus and put it a little bit farther away, where at least in theory, depending on its atmosphere, it could potentially develop habitable conditions. And since we now know that this system seems to contain quite a lot of water, it could only suggest that maybe this planet is actually an ocean world too, and in this case does contain actual temperate ocean on the surface. Not too hot, not too cold. And that's why this particular star system is probably one of the more exciting star systems discovered in the last 6-7 to seven years, and will have to be re-examined by future studies. In this case, a single year here is about 38 days, so it is a little bit farther away from the star. But because this planet does not transit in front of the star, it will be very difficult to detect and to analyze its atmosphere. And so this is quite an intriguing star system, and a star system that we're going to be discussing in the future once the scientists identify something else. At the moment we don't really know much else about it, but because of all these exciting planets located in the star system, it's now basically in the list of some of the more exciting star systems, such as the famous TRAPPIST-1 system. And so once James Webb Telescope is able to analyze the ocean worlds, we're definitely going to come back and talk more about this in order to understand what actually happens around these planets. And so even though here in the solar system, these types of ocean worlds are usually moons or dwarf planets, most of the planetary bodies outside of the solar system seem to create larger objects with a similar composition, but very likely extremely different properties. With properties depending on the distance from the star, and of course the composition of the atmosphere above. And so until these future discoveries and until these future observations with James Webb Space Telescope, that is pretty much all I wanted to mention. The study and all of the relevant links are as always in the description below, and if you've enjoyed this video, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.